I really didn't expect this to happen, but somehow I got addicted to Aiden Chronicle Rising. Send help. Hey everybody, welcome back to Experience Points. Today we're taking a look at Aiden Chronicle Rising, which is a prequel to the upcoming Ayudin Chronicle 100 Heroes. Who made this? Why should you care about it? Well, this was made by Rabbit and Bear Studios, which is famous for being the creators behind the Suikoden series. Uh, it's been written by Yoshitaka Murayama, designed by Junko Kawano, fans of Suikoden. These names are big and you know who they are already. Uh, this game was actually a Kickstarter stretch goal that was actually funded, likely to feed in 200 heroes when that eventually does come out. Aiden Chronicle Rising was actually released a little bit ago, on May 10th of 2022, for pretty much all major platforms, but I played it on Nintendo Switch. So you can play it on whatever platform that you prefer, but it runs just fine on Nintendo Switch, I can at least say that much. Uh, so the game is kind of about a, a scavenger who strolls into town after hearing about uh, a ruins that are just full of treasure and they end up kind of getting swindled into helping out the townsfolk by the mayor basically with a, who have a litany of problems. Uh, they've been co-opted into to doing all these odd jobs around town in order to get their treasure hunting license. Uh, by collecting stamps and stuff, and then that, it, it's its like a big thing. Basically, this whole game, you're going around trying to collect stamps by doing side quests and stuff. You do eventually get your, your license to go dungeon diving and, and to get some treasures and stuff. It kind of hints at maybe wrapping into something larger that's going on uh, that's causing a lot of those overarching problems for the townsfolk. And it sounds like this story is uh, intended to actually tie into 100 Heroes, which is kind of important to think a prequel. What exactly is Aiden Chronicle Rising though? It's a uh, side-scrolling action RPG that has a really addicting gameplay loop. I talked about trying to collect those stamps and everything. It's, it's kind of embarrassing how addicted I got to hunting out these stamps. It feels so satisfying to fill in your stamp card uh, by, by going and doing all these really honestly pretty simple and straightforward quests. Also, the gameplay loop includes trying to get further into the dungeon each time that you go, acquiring new resources to fund buying better gear and crafting better gear, which then in turn gets you deeper into the dungeon. It's a single player action RPG which in which you can actually switch between uh, two characters. So far, I've only got two characters. I think there might be a third here coming up pretty soon. I'm about five hours into the game. It's about like a 10 hour game from what I understand, but I'm about five ish hours in and you can switch between two different characters during combat within these dungeons. Uh, basically, each character has a different button that corresponds with an attack from them. It's actually pretty fluid and you're able to actually chain together different attacks into different combos. And I really actually kind of like it. I'm not usually much of one for side scrolling action RPGs, but this one has actually been kind of fun and addicting. Combat kind of starts off a little slow, a little stiff, but gradually it introduces more combat mechanics, which further increases the fluidity and the flexibility of combat. I really have been enjoying my time so far with Aiden Chronicle Rising. And visually speaking, I gotta be fully honest here. Initially, I was really turned off by the idea of the paper doll aesthetics. You know, that thing where you have it's like a flash animation from like the early 2000s, basically, where you have this really great drawing and stuff that's been sliced into different pieces and then moved around at the joints. It's not my preference even now. Uh, and for a lot of games, it's a huge kind of deal breaker for me. And maybe that's something of my own preferences that I just need to kind of get over at some point. However, I got to say something about the way that it was done in this game and, and maybe it has to do with the scale of it. Uh, has allowed me to actually kind of look past this art style, which is usually a deal breaker for me. I think that maybe it's the smaller scale of the characters that kind of hides some of the joints and it almost, if you're not looking too closely, almost just looks like regular kind of pixel art. Maybe, I don't know if that's, I don't know exactly what it is about it, or maybe it's the way that it's actually animated. It doesn't just feel like a bunch of motion tweens. It looks like it's actually been animated by people who know what they're doing. I don't know exactly what it is, but when I see it in action, it just doesn't bug me the way that a lot of larger character sprites do when they're kind of done this way. And the character designs are top notch all in all. 
and are a really nice preview into kind of what we can expect with 100 Heroes, which is something that I'll probably say a few times as we go about this uh, first impressions video. The world design, I think, is very gorgeous and polygonal and it got this dynamic lighting and shadows that really helps with the substantiveness of the paper dolls. I think that's another thing is that usually the paper dolls look kind of flat and formless, essentially. They look 2D and with the way that the lighting affects the shadows and the world isn't 2D, the fact that the way that it all kind of connects together makes it feel almost like an HD 2D, even though it's still done with the paper doll look. I can't quite place why I like it, but I do. I, I like it a lot more than I expected to. So visually, uh, Jungo Kawano character designer did a fantastic job. Actually, Jungo Kawano did the design of the entire game, apparently. They're just the designer. Did a fantastic job. Visually, it's fantastic, but how does it sound? Phenomenal. It includes several songs that are all beautifully composed. Again, just a wonderful preview into what we might expect to see from 100 Heroes when that eventually does come out. Uh, and that's for a very good reason. It's been composed by two legendary composers, Motoi Sakuraba of uh, Tales and Star Ocean and Michiko Naruke, who you might know from the Wild Arms series. Big names were involved in the production of this. Music is pretty solid. Overall, honestly, it's it's just a budget title. So keep that in mind. It was about 15 bucks and you get about 10 hours or so. The title is fun enough to really hold my attention and the gameplay loop is pretty addicting. I'm honestly probably going to 100% this, all of the side quests in all likelihood. I think that the fishing mini game is going to be the hardest thing for me to do because it relies on timed button presses and I'm not super familiar with the Super Nintendo or the Nintendo uh, four button layout anymore for some reason. It's just been superseded by my PlayStation button layout. So at some point I got to get that. Uh, I think that as far as a future game tie-in goes, it feels like above and beyond really what I've experienced from anything else before, which uh, admittedly is pretty limited, like Fallout Shelter, I think, is the one I can think of off the top of my head. And for $15, honestly, it's not a bad deal. I don't regret buying it, especially if it helps further fund uh, the production of 100 Heroes, which is also just kind of a big deal for me. I just want 100 Heroes to succeed, and I'm already kind of invested in its success. The game isn't just a competent side-scrolling action RPG. It's also just, again, a fun preview into the world of Aiden Chronicle and something to kind of help hold us over as we wait rather impatiently at times for this upcoming long-anticipated Suikoden spiritual successor. And at 15 bucks, to me, the price is right. Anyways, that's about it for me for today, so I hope you all have a good rest of your week. Have a great day, everybody.